Hello everybody, my name is Kenny Vlamik, MD at the Department of Gastroenterology at Ghent University Hospital in Belgium. My co-authors are Professor Peter Hendricks from the same department, Professor Lise Lahusse from the Department of Bioanalysis at Ghent University, Dr. Olde van Lander from the Department of Hepatobiliary Surgery at Ghent University Hospital, and Professor Hubert Piesseveau from the Department of Gastroenterology at University Hospital Saint-Luc in Brussels, Belgium. The title of our article is Endoscopic Management of Biliary Leaks, a Systematic Review with Meta-Analysis. The first line approach to biliary leaks is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, in which biliary sphincterotomy, biliary stenting, or a combination of both techniques are most commonly used. To date, no systematic review nor meta-analysis had been performed to define the optimal strategy. We aimed to address the following questions. First, should we perform a sphincterotomy, a stenting, or a combination of both techniques? Second, if we use stents, should we aim to bridge the biliary leak if possible? Third, what stent diameter should be used? And last, how should we deal with biliary leaks that are refractory to first-line endoscopic management? In our systematic review and meta-analysis with 11 studies, we reported a very high success rate of all interventions, more than 90%, without statistical significant differences between them. However, as the combination of sphincterotomy with leak bridging stenting and stenting alone with leak bridging stents had the highest probabilities of being the best treatments, our results suggest a reduced risk of failure with stenting if the leak can be bridged. Whether or not the placement of a leak bridging stent should be combined with a sphincterotomy needs to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, for example regarding the risk of pancreatitis or bleeding. If the leak cannot be bridged, stenting alone with a short stent seems to be the preferred option, as sphincterotomy alone or systematically combining the short stent with a sphincterotomy did not seem to improve success rate. Furthermore, sphincterotomy-related complications can increase morbidity. Comparing small with large diameter stents showed no significant differences in clinical success. In refractory biliary leaks, we can use multiple plastic stents or a fully covered self-expandable metal stent. And although the multiple plastic stents can be used at a lower cost, a significantly lower risk of failure was reported in the fully covered self-expandable metal stand group. Regarding the fact that um, most included studies had small sample sizes and that there was an important heterogeneity concerning study design, setting or endoscopic interventions, we believe in terms of future trials that large-scale randomized clinical trials are needed to further define the optimal strategy, for example, in patients with low-grade, high-grade or refractory biliary leaks. In conclusion, we reported high clinical success in treating biliary leaks with sphincterotomy, stenting or a combination without statistical differences. However, the available evidence suggests a reduced risk of failure with stenting especially if the leak can be bridged. In this case, when regarded safe, the combination of a leak bridging stent with a sphincterotomy should be considered. If leak bridging is not possible, stenting alone with a short stent seems to be preferred. In refractory biliary leaks, the temporary placement of a fully covered self-expendable metal stent seems to be a good option with a high success rate. I thank you for your attention.